Hey everyone, my name is Meera. Welcome back to my channel. In this video, I am going to be reviewing the book Skeptors of Imperia by Vignesh Ravichandran. If you have been looking for a fantasy fiction written by an Indian author, then by the end of this video, you will be able to identify what parts of this book appeal to you and whether you should pick it up or not. Um, so this is a story of two worlds and how the fate of both of these worlds are tied to each other. One day, a group of thugs, they plan a heist at this museum where um, ancient artifacts are being showcased and so they end up getting whisked away to the world of Imperia. In this novel, we follow their story as they try to survive in this foreign land filled with strange creatures and beings. Let me tell you a bit about the plot execution. One of the things that I found really interesting about this book is that it's like a story within a story. So you read about Hannah and a group of archaeologists who stumbled upon these scrolls written by an Egyptian king who then proceeds to tell you about how he encountered this world of Imperia. And as you keep peeling away these layers of stories one after the other you keep wondering where all of this is going so this aspect of the novel where there is a story within a story was something that i really liked something that kept me glued to the book was the visual representation of the scenes and creatures throughout the pages of this book you will find so many artworks that really help your imagination and you know add to the storytelling this for example is one of my favorite parts of the novel it is a fight sequence that is going on in an arena and all of it has been beautifully graphically represented for us to see for us to enjoy so that is something i like all of these different artworks throughout the pages as much as i enjoyed the story and the different themes that this novel deals with the one thing that bothered me so much was the writing and when I say the writing, I really mean the editing. It hasn't been edited well, there were quite a lot of grammatical errors. I feel like if this book had been polished a bit more, it would have made a world of difference in how I perceived it, in how much I enjoyed it. That was the one thing that really troubled me because I know that this story has potential. The author's writing style is very elaborate and descriptive. Every scene is written with such details that there's no scope that you will not understand what the author is trying to say. So I feel like if the book had been edited properly, it would have refined the whole story. It would have cut down on parts of the writing that were not really needed. And on the whole, it would have easily made the book a 4.5 star read. Lastly, um, this book being multi-layered has so many different plot points and as you're reading them you may wonder where all of this is going, you may think why are we being told the story of so many different characters but believe me it all comes together in the end very well. The author is able to tie up these different plot points so seamlessly. That was something that I was pleasantly surprised by because as I was reading it, I kept wondering, oh, now who is this new character? What is this new storyline? Speaking of characters, there are so many characters in this book. Um, many of them don't really have detailed character arcs because some of them are only there for a very short span of time for just a few pages or so. I wouldn't say that I empathized or I connected with any of these characters because I feel like the context in itself is very different but one thing that made the characters a little realistic was that they displayed this unending greed for power i personally didn't like how easy and convenient it was for friends to turn against each other to betray each other i'm not gonna pick character names and spoil the story for you but anyway but that's my moral compass and i really shouldn't be judging these characters based on that sylvia's character is one that i can very surely tell you i did not like one bit she annoyed me so much she's just a kid but she would act so cocky and arrogant ultimately what all of these characters bring to the story is position they hold in society and what they are willing to do for themselves and for others. Royston is the character who displays the chosen one trope uh, but I didn't mind it because it had been executed well and it wasn't cliché or very stereotypical. In terms of themes, the very obvious themes that really come across to you as a reader from this book are that of good versus evil, betrayal, um, greed for power, uh, power abuse and this very monarchical system of governance where a certain 
group of beings are looked up to and they are worshipped by the rest of society. Moreover, there were these fantastical elements of creatures and hybrids that we're not used to. There are things called dino men and rhino rios. As I was reading this book and learning more about the power dynamics and the corruption that goes on, I felt like this entire world of Imperia sort of reflected uh, our society, our world. Um, I think the USP of this novel is the fact that it is a multi-layered fantasy plot that combines not only our real world but also a fantasy world like that of Imperia. Club together with the visual representation and this sense of adventure that is constantly there in the work. I think it was a unique plot and I really wish that the writing, the editing had done justice to it. I rated this book 3 out of 5 stars. This copy that has been provided to me by the author himself is the international edition. So if you were to buy this book, you would get the Indian edition of it. Let me know in the comments if you've read this book or if the fantasy genre is something that appeals to you. If you enjoy watching my videos, then please like, comment, share and subscribe. Click the bell icon so that you can stay notified every time I post a video. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you again with another video soon. Bye!